Uh, oh, do you know no. this guy? Um, you know, you pa Hassan him? Piker? Yes. He's a he yeah, YouTuber. The... Oh, is he? Does he yeah. do you know? Yeah. I know he used to be, uh, he was the nephew of the Young Turks guy. He kind of like, he basically trailblazed uh, Twitch politics. It's such a f dingus, dude. They just the show their no, channel name, dumbass. How is that so f***ing hard? Like, what is this attitude that you have? You stupid man. <laughs> <laughs> is that really about the guy? No shot, right? No, it, he's talking about, yeah, but like he's talking to someone who just said, just show the fucking channel credits, and he's like, oh, f off, which is funny. Like, yeah. I just all he had to do was be, be like, so yeah, mad. Well, okay, do. yeah. Um, I'd be willing to watch, because uh, it sounded like you said you'd seen the J video, the JX one. Did you have any thoughts on it? Uh, I haven't watched that one yet. I can, though. I can react to that if you'd like me to. Well, I mean, it would be. <laughs> Great if we could react together. Why not do that? Um, I mean, yeah, if you want to. How long is that video? Oh, so I can generate your channel some content. Why oh not? Oh my goodness. Yeah. We can show people how it's done. Yeah. Do you want to link me the video? <laughs> if people I suppose see... people want us to talk about ad block is not the same thing as stealing content. I agree with that. There is a line between them, but I understand the connection Desi's making, though. Yeah. I mean, ad block is worse than reacting. It, guys, I don't think you guys realize how unbelievably huge. Let's do it. In November of 2020, I posted a 14 minute YouTube video, minute YouTube video in which I roast a weird house. It was, when I first released it, one of my worst performing videos for quite a while. It seemed like it was just gonna end up being one of those videos that didn't get seen by that many people, and that's absolutely fine, you know? That is, until completely out of the blue, it was given a huge amount of extra exposure by an absolute legend. I'd never met this person, in fact, I didn't even know they existed before this, but the boost that they gave me almost doubled the video view count in just a few days. And for that, I would genuinely like to thank the Reddit user who posted my video to r slash videos. You did me an absolute solid. This kind of thing is genuinely really helpful. Anyway, today we're talking about reaction content. Chances are you probably know plenty of creators who react and respond to the work of other creators. And hell, that's something I do plenty. For anyone who doesn't know, I actually started out as a response YouTuber. Be it in a stream or in a fully edited video, I've reacted and responded to a lot of other people's videos in my time. Here's a clip from one of those videos so you can see the kind of thing I do. Dip your balls in Tabasco sauce. Now when I cover other people's work like this, there are a few kinds of etiquette that I feel it's important to stick to. Do you think there's any valuable sort of point of view from the whole gentleman's uh, agreement or unofficial rules or anything like that? Do you find much to s stake in it, I guess? Like, we, we try to avoid doing DMCAs or shitting on other people's work when they've... Maybe it's very much undo instead of just, like, shooting randomly. Like, do you think there's anything to that, or do you always want to get the more principled arguments? Um, I mean, it's going to depend on what we're talking about. But at the end of the day, gentlemen's agreements are just an opportunity for people to ruin you if if you're not careful to, to utilize the tools that you have so like <clears throat> should people be dmcaing people immediately no like that's probably not no. a good idea but like that's a tool that you have if you truly are suffering um losses at the hands of people you know stealing your content like i don't think like DM, like if this was the case like let's say it was the case that we all knew absolutely that react streamers were severely depriving or even moderately depriving youtube uploaders of revenue if that was the case and then they reached out and they're like hey can you not watch my show on your stream anymore and they still did it i think dmc is 100 percent okay there like absolutely okay like that's literally what the tool was built for um i mean but do you because like I, i've seen i don't know if you how much weight in this but like i i don't want to fucking dmca anybody really um, really? and you might be like well, what the f why yeah, it's like why i don't know i just want to f deal with like all the shit that comes with it uh like maybe it's because of i have a lack of familiarity with doing it i've literally never dmca'd somebody well, well you i believe have your first you have time. right we should go look for um yeah we should go look for videos and find something for you to dmca we can break your cherry right now i'm sure somebody's <laughs> stolen your shit online <laughs> But because uh, you're obviously highlighting like the first step being like to ask them publicly and friendly is like, yeah, sure. And keep going. Try and make us think about it. Maybe even make a video about it before DMCAing it. Or do you say that's just that's unnecessary? Just go for yeah, it. Make a video about it. Reach out to them. I mean, like you can DMCA people and it gives them like a seven day like time period to respond. Like you can do that as well um, so that it doesn't auto strike them. But they've got seven days to remove it. So but, like, do you buy that? That's something that pulls people back from doing it. That pulls people back from doing what? DMCA and. Would it pull people back from DM saying? Wait, what do you mean? Like, because you were saying, like, the argument doesn't hold any water. This is fucking stupid. Like, you should be doing it anyway. Yeah, but it's like, do you buy that these people are actually not doing it partly because of that? 
I think a lot of people they, probably just don't know how to do it. I think they like they hear DMCA and they think that's the thing you do when you hate somebody. <laughs> like, but that's that's what I'm saying though. Like, there, yeah. there's there's going to be so many people out there that you're like, if they were really mad about this, they'd be DMCA, and I'd be like, well, a lot of them, first of all, don't want to do it. They don't know what repercussions are going to be if they do it, and then they're going to be like, yeah, but I mean, like, this is our like job. This is how we make a living. Like, it's probably worth learning. <laughs> Like, figure it out. Oh, no, I agree. Mm -hmm. I, I completely agree. But surely that is a possible explanation as opposed to they're not bothered. Um, I mean, it's such an easy thing to do. If this is the only thing preventing you from doing it, then it sounds like you probably don't care that much. That would be my assumption. If this, I don't know. If this is your livelihood, like, shouldn't you be taking every effort at least to get the easy things out of the way? And DMCA is a pretty f easy thing to do. That's like your lowest tier thing um, for getting people to off or something you know yeah and, and i i agree with the whole like you can just throw one you don't have to throw more than that sure oh you could just um, threaten it or you could do the one with the seven day strike option so get, give them time to remove it like yeah it's still um something i do think that people potentially people like lamino might uh be like no there's no point in getting involved in it especially and it could literally be that he doesn't know how as well or never tried and doesn't want to there's all this stuff that's coming into it that tangles everything up as far as i'm concerned but mm -hmm. it would be nice <clears throat> wait if hold none on. of us use oh yeah, yeah i agree with you can we move into my discord i think abba wants to scream at me <laughs> sure, um, yeah. if you click my discord you should have access to a room it's called destiny's room okay hold on wait wait, wait. oh mudahar stop all right, um, Desi. Oh, anything yeah. else? <laughs> anything else? Gotcha. Um, gotcha. I think we're. I think we're good. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's up to chat at this point. If there's anything else that we're supposed to cover, because I feel like we got it. Are you? Um. Well, f do you want to finish watching that video, Muller? Before I, I am so completely rudely? up to do that. If you want, it does cover the whole topic pretty well. I think. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Go for it. Yeah. Okay. Good. These uh, guys are gone. Let's restart it. <laughs> Let me react. <laughs> <laughs> You uh, ready to go? Yeah. All right, so he... Okay, hang on. Basically, don't take the piss. In a reaction video, the reactor should still be adding stuff and creating content of their own, otherwise what's the point of watching their reaction over the original video? The content that the reactor creates should be at least different enough from the original work that they have created something of their own. For example, take a look at this video oh, from Hold on, House. can you pause this? uplift in stories, the video is a minute. Yes. So here is something that's interesting to tango with. Um, I don't know what the right answer is here. Do you know what some of the biggest value React streamers give to the content? That's a little bit hard to know if, it, if you would consider it like transformative or not. You probably wouldn't, but if you were to guess, what do you think is one of the biggest reasons why people watch React content? Um, I mean, I've got a couple, but a more dystopian guess would be that it helps them feel like they're watching the thing with a friend as opposed to alone. Yeah, you're 100% right. Uh, one of the biggest... That's a kind of a that's a sad way of saying it, but um yeah one of the biggest reasons why React content does well is because people like to watch it with another community. It's like watching things with friends basically. Um, yeah. Now so when people are like there needs to be a good reason to watch that one over the other one, there are a lot of people that will watch videos of mine just because they like to see chat's reaction to it. Um, yeah. Now does that count as transformative or not? Uh, you know, that came up I court, think. Yeah. When we covered denims, I think she brought up that argument that mm -hmm. technically chat being there makes it transformative. Um, argue like th this is a, just a matter of where a line is drawn i i totally understand it as an argument but like mm -hmm. no i don't think chat's enough i'm sorry yeah <laughs> i'd be like well yeah well why it's like uh it's hard to say i guess that it doesn't change the video enough um it doesn't go from being x to y it goes from being x to like i don't mm -hmm. know x with a different color something that's um, interesting is that um you know sargon of a card right i do mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he was straight ripping some lady's um video and throwing it onto his twitter and then he would like title the tweet or something. And I think a judge ruled that as actually being adequately transformative. I'm talking about Akila, obviously, right? Was that it? Yeah, where he was just, he was straight ripping with he, no commentary, the video putting on Twitter, but then he would put a tweet and the judge was like, I think that's transformative enough for it to count. As far as I'm aware, I'd have to check. What mm -hmm. he did was, let's say it's a one minute video. He chopped it up into individual pieces and moved them around to change and to point out flaws in her argument. Oh, did he so Did he actually edit it? I thought yeah. they were just straight rips. Oh, okay, that changes it a bit then if that's the case. But I'm, I'm with you though. If someone re-uploaded just a minute of you making a really great point on Twitter and then got a lot of engagement from it and instead, and you said you wanted to take it down, I'd be like, I guess you can. Mm -hmm. I'd probably argue at that point that it might be more useful for you because people 
are invested in you at that point, not the uh, the person who's uploaded the treat. But I don't know that I would take any issue with you actually DMCAing it. Huh. Okay. Long. <laughs> <laughs> <story. laughs> Matthew Santoro's really <laughs> fell off. <laughs> <laughs> The idea of a minute long ten up lifting story is just like dogs good <laughs> number nine uh for sale use baby shoes. In their reaction to this weird little ten up lifting stories video, they add their own jokes and commentary. Even if you'd already seen the video they were reacting to, you'd have plenty to gain from watching their reaction. It's a different piece of content now. Here we go. Oh wasting time. Oh! Soot House is exceptional, and the whole cast clearly all understand that reaction content is something that it requires effort to do properly. Now, their particular style is by no means the only way to do reaction content. It's a very diverse medium. War Flail versus Katana, or Shinai in this case. Uh, I haven't watched it yet. I wanted to give you my first-hand impression, reaction. Here's some reaction content from Scalagrim, a YouTuber who creates content about swords and other medieval weapons. He often reacts to other people's content, using it as a springboard from which to add his own insight, opinions, and commentary. He actually defended against it. I imagine you take no issue with any of this so far, because it's pretty much in favor of anything you've been talking about as well. Yeah, I mean, he's going through highly yeah. transformative react content, yeah. In reacting, you need to add something. If a reactor hasn't added anything, and watching their reaction is basically just the same experience as watching whatever they're reacting to, then essentially they're just reposting something someone else made to their audience, reaping the rewards of someone else's work under the guise of reacting to it. Now, the wider YouTube community already went through all of this a few years ago. As a YouTube viewer, there's a good chance... Oh fucking hell. <laughs> As a YouTube viewer, there's a good chance that you remember Jinx. Peaking in popularity around 2015, Jinx made a big splash on YouTube with his reaction videos. With someone else's work always playing in the bottom left hand corner of the screen, Jinx's whole thing was to just sit there, pretty much entirely vacuously, hardly saying anything, sometimes soy facing or laughing, as he plays the videos he's reacting to in full. Let's take- It's so, weird you've never heard of him, because you've been on YouTube for fucking ever as well, as well as Twitch, right? But- No way, you... I haven't. I've been on YouTube seriously since probably, I don't know, like 2018, 2019. Oh. Mm -hmm. But like, you used it forever, right? Like, with everyone else? Yeah, but I've always been a streamer, so I don't have time to, like, watch a ton of stuff, so... I miss out on a lot of, like, YouTube drama. I'll only ever hear it well, about, like, yeah, it's huge adventures in the streaming world, you know? Fair enough, but is that like an easy concede for you that you'd be like, this looks like shit? Like if he's if he's only making random faces. Yeah, I can agree that it feels bad. Yeah. Feels bad. Feels bad. Is it morally wrong? I'm not sure. But it yeah. definitely feels bad. I can agree with that. Oh, come on. I can't push you to morally bad. Well, Even if it, it's like a at a zero scale, it's like a, a negative 0 0.1. Um, I think. <sighs> I'm not sure, man. I don't know. Maybe. The thing is, is that, like, I feel like this plays into going back to the first principles thing. We never actually resolved. I personally, yeah. I'm not a huge, I don't like copyright that much. I think most of it is lame. I think we've talked about on stream. I feel like when it comes to, like, even, like, major motion pictures and shit, I feel like copyright should last, like, a year. And then after that, fuck you. Let other people do shit with it. So I'm not, like, a huge copyright person. Um, maybe if I was in a, um, maybe if I was in a situation where my shit was getting ripped, like, hardcore, and I felt like I was losing, maybe I'd feel differently. But, um... Yeah, I don't know. I'm well, I mean, sure. in the situation for movies, right? Like, if mm -hmm. it was one year, but then there's just a channel on YouTube that every time the year ends up, they just repost the next newest movie on there, and then they make the most money out of everybody. Like, it's just, that's that's the way that works. Doesn't it feel a little like, wow, that person was, I guess they got in first with the uploading movies when they're, they're out, and they hey, do I nothing mean, like, else. you get a year to make money off your copyright, and then after that, yeah, fucking let people watch it for free. Fuck yeah. Based. Well, why are you in favor of it for a year, even, then? Um, probably, well, because if it wasn't for a year, then people could literally, you would spend a hundred million dollars making a movie and then somebody would steal it in one day and then you'd be completely fucked. Nobody would invest in like any copyright material anymore. So it is about like money, because like, I got, I, you know, I, I mean, we're going to get way too into the weeds of politics at this point, but like, you know, it's your property. <laughs> like it's to be something that you're allowed to do whatever the fuck you want with sort of thing. Well, well, your property is interesting when you talk about copyright, because technically when you're depriving somebody of a copyright, you're not really depriving them of a physical property. It's intellectual property. And the rules yeah. around intellectual property are going to be governed by whatever state body exists. And yeah, be because when somebody steals intellectual property, they're not depriving you of it like they would of physical property, right? Now, they could deprive you from rents or like uh, revenues from it. But it's, a, it's I think it's a little bit more of a complicated topic than just like somebody stealing your toothbrush, you're right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I understand the difference. It's just, um, well, I guess it's kind of pointless to go down this road because we're not in that world, 
I suppose. Though I find it interesting, the idea of uh, limiting copyrights to one year. At least if it's, you know, across the board, I, it wouldn't be uh, too bad to see what that world would look like. I yeah, suppose. I'd just be curious to see what it would look like. Or maybe even like five years. But I think it would be curious. Yeah, right now it's way too long. Well, 100 years or whatever is way too long. Uh, Stupid. I'd be inclined to agree with you on that, yeah. Especially when Disney, like, have a stranglehold on so many IPs that, as you said earlier, could be made better if they were released into more creative and uh, better talented people, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, so, I can buy that. It's just that this... Um, it's almost like the word pathetic comes up, but then that just goes back to the sort of like the criticism is just that they're talentless and sure. they shouldn't have success if they're talentless. Sure. But I mean, I think like playthrough channels that just like play through story games are going to be like the same, right? Well, I told you, I'm with you on that one, actually, uh, which is controversial, I think. But would you, do you feel channels. like that's morally bad? People that just play through like The Last of Us on the easiest difficulty or people that just play through like Telltale games or... But like I said, if it's... I think The Last of Us, you can, through the mechanics, transform that experience. Like, watching you play The Last of Us while commenting on all the story beats and you actually shooting, aiming, finding things, and reading lore, I think that would transform it completely. However, if you said nothing, mm -hmm. um, I'd be like, we're skirting the line now, because uh, we're lucky in the world that we have that games, for the most part, let you do whatever the hell you want, including game soundtracks. You can just use, you can re-upload them, make money if you want, mm -hmm. which, you know, that's probably wrong if we're going to be buying the whole copyright stuff with everything. Um, but with games, like, yeah, there's a couple of games where I think that if you were to upload them without commentary, that, yeah, it would be kind of unethical because you're just stealing someone else's thing at that point. Mm -hmm. um, okay. But are you on board with that? or I think I'd be okay with game companies deciding how they want to go forward with it. Like, I I'm sympathetic towards game companies that are like, you can't just re-upload, like our game, our heavy story-driven game, because then who's going to play it? Because there's probably an, an actual substitution effect there. Because yeah, I'm not looking to escape hatch this with like, yeah, but they're, they're way richer and way more powerful, so it doesn't really matter. I'd rather appeal to like, it still feels wrong, though. It's the same kind yeah. of wrong, I, mean, I assume. I don't, yeah, I don't think I would ever appeal to the amount of, I don't think just because you make a lot of money that that justifies people like doing things to that they wouldn't to poor people, right? Like, oh, this person makes a lot of money so we can steal his content. Like, I don't think that doesn't feel very satisfying to me. Like, if it's wrong, it should be wrong regardless. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm trying to aim it as well. Sure, yeah. Take a look at his reaction to the official compilation of the full Astaf movie series. This compilation is 14 minutes long and contains all eight episodes of Astaf movie that were out back when it was released. The Astaf movie series represents a huge amount of work spearheaded by the series creator, Tomska, seen here with me at VidCon 2020. Here's a compilation I put together of everything, everything that Jinx says over the course of his reaction to this compilation. Are you ready? Here we go. What? Really? Wow. What? What? Oh, what? What the fuck? What the fuck? Hey, die. What the hell? Not the buns. What the hell is this? What the fuck? This is all you got out. Oh. Again. Those 33 words that it took him 15 seconds to say, 27% of which were what were all he had to contribute as he let the video play for its full 14 minute duration that's all he has to say besides his outro where he sums up his thoughts on the video it's so funny because it's just like the whole thing is just like what and his intro where he explains he's gonna be hey. watching the astaf movie episode yeah, know, right? eight compilation <laughs> I know a lot of people been requesting this one like back millions millions of views and subs i just it does make you wonder at some point like what the people watching this, but I guess what we went back to earlier, the whole, like, people want to feel like they're watching it with someone that is enough of a powerful motivator to get this stuff to be a successful mm -hmm. industry. I think for, like, they, like, do one through eight, like, one at a time, but it's kind of hard to find each and every one of them, like... It's kind of hard to... I'm sorry, to, to quote you, what... Did you look? For the absolute rest of the time, he's just sitting there in silence, sometimes laughing or making a facial expression. And for this video, where Jinx just freeboots someone else's work, adding nothing, he gets five million views. I'm not salty. Now, what I'm not doing here is I am definitely not asking you to get mad on Tom Scar's behalf. I don't actually know him. That's that's not how pictures work. But as far as I can tell, he has all the means to easily get this video taken down if that's what he wants. As a large YouTuber, I have the ability to deal with copyright infringement directly. I can either take down people's re-uploads of my videos 
or I can monetize those videos, basically meaning that, you know, it stays up on their channel, but I make money from ads. And 99.9% .9 of the time, I don't take down other people's videos. As far as I can tell, Tom is totally fine with this video existing, and that's completely valid of him. The thing is, though, it would also be totally valid of Tom Scott to turn around to Jinx and say, what the fuck are you doing? Can you not just re-upload my work with your face in the corner, please? It would be absolutely reasonable for any YouTuber to have that reaction. Enter Jack's films. That's not an instruction. When Jinx rebooted one of- You know him, right? I don't, but I don't know what? anybody, so don't worry about who I know. Okay. That doesn't mean anything. Okay, I just don't know. I would have thought, I thought, I, for some reason, I remember you talking to him, but he's another person that would be interesting to see if you, oh, I might uh, have. he would change your mind on anything. Jack's video is exactly to him the same way. I don't know. Uh, I don't remember. Chat, do you know? He is old school. He's an old meme. Okay, I don't know. Maybe I might have. I'm not sure. Jack snapped back with a video satirizing Jinx's content. Jack's video ends with a series of pertinent, snappy, and to the point criticisms of what Jinx was doing. I really like the part where you played my video in its entirety and then didn't really react to it, just kind of sat there. You added virtually no insight. Pretty brilliant how you play the entire video in your channel. It's like it's a one stop shop. Why bother going to my channel to watch that video when you can just Watch that and your reaction. And obviously Jack is well within his rights to react this way because there's really no meaningful difference between what Jinx did and someone just downloading and then reposting one of Jack's videos. Just because some people are okay with this kind of thing doesn't mean you get to go around doing it to everyone. Your partner might be really into hard cactus play, but before you whip out your favorite Acanthosarius tetragonus, you're going to check. I chose this picture because it looked a bit like a willy. There's a very clear reason that Jinx attracted this kind of backlash with his content, but channels like Soot House didn't attract the same kind of backlash with theirs. If a part of your work relies on you uploading other people's content, then you better make sure that's not all you're doing, otherwise you're just re-uploading other people's content. Which is why I believe that Jinx didn't get away with it at all, meanwhile a lot of Twitch streamers do, because mm -hmm. they're not exclusively uploading people's content and using it. They For also these... do. They also do what? I was going to say they also do content where they fully react because they're very passionate and interested in the topic, or that they're playing games and that's a whole other thing, or they're mm -hmm. just talking. Do these YouTubers, are they live reacting? Or are they just uploading like a reaction video? They'll record themselves and then chop it up to mainly have their reactions, but a lot of the time it just ends up being... I mean, I say this as if it's still current. I don't know if people still do this on YouTube. It's mostly streamers moving their shit onto YouTube now. Because okay, this died. This It wasn't just Jinx. There was loads of people doing this. Mm -hmm. But once it got like shamed out of the fucking whole culture, like it's gone. Mm -hmm. But now it's coming back, sort of. And it, it, it always comes back every once in a while and everyone gets riled up. Like I said, that's why people are getting probably ridiculously angry now. Because it's just like, oh shit, this shit again. Hmm. It's oh. fine to do that if you have permission, but it's not if you don't. So let's take this back to the golden rule. How, as a React content creator, do you avoid taking the piss? Everyone in chat saying they still do it, so they go, that shows what I know about like the... It's it's pervasive, and it's really profitable, so of course it's still there, that makes sense. Way to go, Donuts. It's just a matter of like, what should be done about it, and I think people... That's why it's getting louder. Mm -hmm. Well, I think that so long as you're clearly trying, it's fine. You don't have to knock it out of the park every time, so long as there's clearly a respect and understanding there that you are working with someone else's content, I think you're good. Hassan Piker is one of the most successful streamers on- Uh, do you know oh, no. this guy? Um, you know, you Hassan Piker? Yes. He's a yeah, he YouTuber. The... Oh, is he, does he yeah, know you now? Yeah. I know he used to be, uh, he was the nephew of the Young Turks guy. He kind of like, he basically trailblazed uh, Twitch politics. He kind of oh, started all up and uh, he's the guy he kind of um, off. Okay. very, he, he kind of built the left online. Mm -hmm. uh, it's pretty awesome, actually. You should, I feel like you should know him. That's weird. Huh. All of Twitch. His streams are on the long side, generally hitting the eight hour mark. He's wildly successful, generating a huge amount of traffic and revenue. And when I found out that he'd reacted to the video where I just roast a weird house, I got pretty excited. I wasn't really familiar with any of Hassan's work, but I have really been enjoying a lot of this modern wave of reaction content. I knew that there are still some jinxes around, but I also knew that Hassan is an accomplished creator who almost certainly knows better than to just- Oh, he left. Okay, so it actually turns out that Hassan will just fairly regularly get up and leave while other people's videos are playing. This isn't what I'm here to prove in this video, this is just a fact. This is something he does. You could make a compilation of me 
sitting around, not even on camera, with a fucking video playing in the background. You could, when you're live for 13 hours a fucking day, of course there's gonna be, of course there's gonna be fucking dead space in between. But it's not the leaving in and of itself that is the issue. The same issue would be present if he was just sat there not saying anything like Jinx was. The getting up and leaving for extended periods of time just goes to show that he doesn't give a shit about even pretending that he's contributing anything here. But even when he's in the room, he's no stranger to just streaming other people's content with his own face in the corner. Now any content creator he does this to could be entirely okay with it, but I know from personal experience that he definitely doesn't bother to check. Now this certainly is isn't the only thing he does. Hell, it's not even the only kind of reaction content that he does, but it is something that he does pretty often, so let's talk about it. It's also very much not just- Don't worry, I wouldn't expect that you're gonna have to defend his arguments. Hassan brought out some uh, real interesting ones, like the he doesn't want to die one. Yeah, I think XQC I uh, saw on Twitter was also bringing up some not so great arguments, so I'm not here to- You know what's great is you talk about how you want to defend portions of it and it's so annoying because then you'll get lumped in with like the whole thing and you're like fine let's do it but mm -hmm. the reverse is also happening where the biggest offenders are jumping into the group of people who i don't really have any issue with at all sure. and he's like yeah us reactors yeah and it's like fuck off sure yeah. just him who does this this particular style of content other people's is a growing trend with plenty of popular creators taking part in it that's why I think this is so important to talk about. There are currently huge areas of the internet where precedent is being established and reinforced that it's apparently just absolutely fine to post other people's content so long as your face or chair is in the corner as you do it. Now, I don't want to be too quick to judge any of the creators that do that. All I want to do in this video is talk about what I do and don't think is okay and present my arguments as to why. And now because Hassan is our primary example, let's take a look at the reaction he served up to some of my content. And while we're doing it, let's see how he compares to Jinx. Okay. 8800 Blue Lick Road is a three bedroom house that you can go on a 3D virtual tour of right now if you're interested in purchasing it. And it's, uh, you know, they say you don't really know someone until you've uh, held hands while what taking a dump. This digital fuck? property viewing is one of those things where the longer you stare at the image, the more bizarre things you notice. So today I'm <laughs> going to take you on a sightseeing tour of the oddities. This is literally Steak HQ. Hold on. I I'm going to be back in one second of 8800 Blue Lick Road. The first three and a half minutes of my video were enjoyed mostly by Hassan's chair and his chat. Although apparently for the duration of this, Hassan was watching the video on his phone, so he can see everything that his chair is seeing. It's not until we're four minutes in, which just to be clear, is about a third of the way through the video that Hassan decides to add his first piece of commentary. I feel like it's it's gotta be like, uh, it, it's gotta be, I don't know. Base? Like someone who has a. I mean, you know, like the whole React harder gets memed, but like, do you think that it's important to actually like try and have insight or be entertaining? Because you said most people aren't even capable of it, which I totally agree. Well, I but think... like, is it on you to even try? Yeah, I guess, like I said, now, whether or not any of this is good or bad, I'm not sure, but I said, what I said before was, I think it would depend on the type of video you're reacting to. Like, if Hassan was reacting to a Ben Shapiro video and he watched the whole thing and he didn't say anything, I'd be like, what are you doing, bro? Um, but if he was watching like that JFK. Uh, conspiracy documentary, like, I wouldn't expect them to say anything. I don't know what he could even contribute, you know? And then your response you to that was like, then don't watch those types of videos, basically, but yeah. I don't buy that. I feel like you'd have loads to contribute, and so would he, if you actually really wanted to talk about what was happening in the video. Nah, I don't. Well, I don't know what I would even say. I don't know much about JFK conspiracies. I think there were like two or three comments that I had to make, but other than that, I have no idea what I can, I'm just there to basically learn like chat. Or like the, the internet, another good example, like that internet historian cave guy, like that we're just like watching like this guy tell a story about a dude that got stuck in a cave. I don't know what I could possibly contribute to that. I mean, not to get too meta with this, but like, you know, a big reason people watch either of us break down anything is that we give everything, like we say more than we ever normally would. That's kind of like the deal of them watching us. So if I'm say watching that video from internet historian, I could just start talking about how like, do you know like with these, these guys who go into these holes, like, for some reason, they'll go through a hole that's basically the size of their body, and they're pretty chill about it. When that's the kind of thing that I think is some like staggering number of people who are like absolutely deathly afraid of ever doing it. The fucking people who do this are built different; like they're insane, and uh, it'll be in pitch black as well. It's like, we're talking about the times where they only have like a lantern at best. Just something like that per minute is perfectly normal and easy, and it's why people are watching you. I'm gonna give you a video at some point. I'm gonna challenge you to do it. We'll see. Absolutely.
I, 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 we pause it on EFAP. There's no video you could show me that I wouldn't have. Never mind. For. Yeah, that's right. I did do that. EFAP. Never mind. You probably could. Yep. No, yeah, fuck you. Disability <laughs> or something, right? Um, I'm not sure what part of this messy, weird house has made Hassan conclude, hmm, yes, only a disabled could have caused this. That's what he sounds like, shut up. Or what kind of disability he could possibly mean? Like, I'm not even sure if he means mental or physical. What the fuck are you talking about? What's the disability that makes you go, I need to install a toilet next to my fucking toilet? No, I'll give it- Did you get, like, his- fucking sentence is so much more interesting to even think and talk about the fact that he saw all of this and said the person was probably disabled sure yeah like th like that I, I find this fascinating that like he's contributed basically nothing and yet what he contributed is more interesting than a lot of what anyone could have said about that snap that he uh, snippet that he showed mm -hmm. now i'll give it to hassan this is a more fully formed thought than anything jinx said while tom scar's video was playing it's also a more fully formed thought than me going Ugh! But he doesn't elaborate either. This is it. This is his commentary. If he began to elaborate on what it was he actually meant by that comment, he might have started approaching having something meaningful to add to my work. He'd also hopefully have made it clear that he didn't actually mean most of the things that it sounded like he could have meant by that. I also just really want to know what the fuck he meant. But so far, my video has played uninterrupted for nearly a third of its length, and all Hassan has contributed is going, uh, it's probably a disabled person that did this, which technically is a sentence. He lets the video play for another 45 seconds before eventually adding his second comment. I like, I, I will never understand why there's two bathrooms side by side. I guess that's like the fucking, the biggest flex you can do is when you have not one, but two fucking side by side bathrooms you know what i mean no not really so the house i was roasting actually does have two side by side bathrooms so based on the fact that i haven't shown that yet in the video that he's reacting to and the fact that what i did just show is two side by side toilets my guess is that he's just forgotten the word toilet and is saying bathroom instead of toilet and to be honest no i really don't know what he means by this i'm not sure if it's supposed to be a joke a serious comment or a mix of the two is he trying to say that a flex is normally something extravagant and unnecessary and this is extravagant and unnecessary. I guess we'll go with, I think he technically has added something small here. I'm just not really sure what it was. He then lets the video play completely uninterrupted for another two minutes before eventually he makes a third comment. So it's a, it's a house that- <laughs> This guy's really mad. I mean, you, you have to understand, like, the autistic detail is to prove the point, but no, I- I know, this is funny. I know what you mean. Like, yeah. I'm like this, so I don't, uh, it's, you know. Oh, I'll Gucci, I'll Gucci and the Hoochie. Used to belong to a church, but then the eBay resellers just like made it into their eBay house or something. Is that what it is? He'd been receiving a few messages in chat telling him that this house used to be a church. And here his contribution to my video is to ask, hey, is that true? He then adds his fourth comment, which is about the fact that the house is full of loads of boxes. Having that many boxes means they could be a streamer, to be honest. Honestly, I really don't know what he means by this one either. But hey, you can explain you're a streamer. What does it mean that you have loads of boxes? Oh, um... Every single streamer house you'll ever go to, when you enter the house, there's 50 million boxes from Amazon because every streamer orders shit and then they just throw the boxes in the main room. Every streamer house I've been to has got like 50 million Amazon boxes and random shit or bags from like food takeout or whatever, yeah. Can I just hire someone to deal with it? <laughs> I usually do, I have a maid that comes twice a week, but yeah. <laughs> All right. But this is the first instance where I feel that I'm just missing the reference. Like, I think it's pretty clear that he's making some kind of joke here. I just don't get it. Now, I think by this point, you probably understand the nature of Hassan's commentary. It's pretty much non-existent. In total, Hassan ended up not even spending two minutes talking as he let my 14 minute video play in full. He's very clearly leaning on my video to entertain his audience for him in this situation. This is the downtime he has no choice but to take because of his choice to stream for 13 hours a day. Jinx definitely did worse in the matter of actually adding something to the content, but neither of them have done well at all. Jinx, at the very least, did shout out the original video and put a link to it in his description. It's even right at the top of his description, so you don't have to click show more to see it good stuff link to the original video is in the description if you just want to see some random shit i don't know why i'd want to click it because you've already shown me literally all of it but at least it's there by reposting someone else's work you remove it from its original context a context which is controlled by the creator. For example, the latest Ast of Movie compilation ends with a merch store shout out and some links to some more of Tom Scar's work. The description is filled with all kinds of links, including links to Tom's other social media and people that Tom wants
response to credit. And of course, this is a YouTube video, so there are loads of useful buttons under it by default, including a subscribe button, a like button, and a link to the creator's channel. Not only is there loads of really useful stuff here, there's also a dislike button. By reposting someone else's work, you completely change this context. On Jinx's re-upload, most of these links are unavoidably gone, replaced with links that benefit Jinx instead. I don't think we actually got to talk about that level of damage. I assume you consider it pretty minuscule, though. No, actually, that's a big one. I try to, believe it or not, when I'm watching other people's shit, like, I won't skip their ads, and I'll try to, like, if they... Like, I think when I finished the one guy's video, I linked his Patreon at the end. I usually try to, like, link channels, if I remember to. Because um, you should give them some kind of, like, shout-out or something. But, like, people yeah. that will watch other people's, rea um, like, videos, and then they, like, they skip the ad reads in the middle. It's like, bro, at least let the motherfucker do his ad read. Like, damn, you're <laughs> literally eating all of his content. You might as well let the guy try to get, like, 10 or 20 people from chat. <laughs> you know, like, watch the VPN ad. But, yeah. Yeah, and the, um, like, at the end, when they say, like, what else they've got coming up, do you let them sort of say that stuff? Yeah, I try to play through to the end, yeah. Because cause yeah. otherwise you're literally just, like, straight ripping. Like, you're ripping, like, 90% of it, and the 10% you're chewing off are, like, the part that they probably get compensated the most for. Uh, yeah. Yeah, like, it kind of comes back to the fact that you're doing that because it's probable that you're doing damage. But, like, well, that's know, kind of where I'm damage. at with... I'm just, I'm making a lot of money off it, so if I can, like, help the dude out a little bit, like, of course I will. That's why... Here... Um, or, God, yeah, do you think? Well, like, what I was getting at was more so just, like, you don't even... You're not certain of any damage, necessarily, because you don't, we don't have the numbers, like I said, but you're still willing to do all of that. Do you consider that above and beyond or just neutral? Um, Probably above and beyond, but, I mean, like, I think everybody should do it. If I think I, that's the minimum. Like, like, everyone should be doing that. Sure. I think if there was, like, an easy way to, like, compensate people for their work, I think most people would do it, I think. Maybe that's just me being idealistic. It's funny you but... say that, because Hassan desperately cuts off Jay before any promotion of his own videos. It's quite funny. I think it's in this video. Why? So, it is good of him <laughs> that if question. the links he can control, he makes the first one a link to Tom Scar's original video. It would be even better of him to not just repost other people's work without permission, but this is the next best thing. Now, again, I'm not asking you to get angry on Tom Scar's behalf. I'm not asking you to get angry on my behalf either. I'm doing fine. I'm incredibly lucky to be able to work YouTube as my job. I just don't know if Hassan freebooting my work even impacted me negatively. And if it did, I don't know how severely. I just don't have access to that kind of information. But what I do know is that if by doing this, Hassan had taken literally every future potential viewer from that video, and as a result, it was literally never watched again ever, I would still be doing absolutely fine. I'm not trying to tell you some kind of sob story here about just how hard my life is. If in a shocking twist of character, Hassan offered to financially compensate me for the video of mine he freebooted, I wouldn't take his money. However, when this kind of thing is done completely without permission and without knowing enough about the original creator, you run the risk of freebooting work from a creator who is struggling. Or you could end up freebooting a video that represents months or even years of work on behalf of the creator. Creator. I once spent six months working all day, every day, on one single YouTube video, and if Hassan had freebooted that, I would be very pissed off. I would be even more pissed off if I was a creator who genuinely was struggling, either financially or in just getting people to my channel to watch the videos that I make. And I would be more pissed off if when a reactor freebooted my content, they hadn't even taken the tiniest piece of minimal effort to just acknowledge the original creator in any way, completely taking the work that they just used to entertain their audience for granted with no... Th I'm not sure if it makes sense to this video, but I just wanted to mention it is true. Someone just mentioned in chat that uh, Hassan did indeed call Jay a Nazi as a result of all this. <laughs> well, is he? Uh, well, of course. Like, can't you tell already? Like, I feel <laughs> Wait, like it's just blatant. Why would he call him a Nazi? Because he's <laughs> vaguely associated with EFAP, who are 100% Nazis. That, that's obvious. Like, I wouldn't need to prove that one. But um, Wait, you guys? Anyway, yeah. yeah. His son fucking despises us. The second he found out that we were critical of him, he, like... Calls you Nazis? Down. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's because someone in chat would have said it. It's that kind of stupid shit where... You know, it's just like dismiss, get him out of here, sort of thing. It's uh, oh, it's I didn't know you guys had like, I don't know you guys had a history like that. Oh, we don't have a history. Oh, you just someone in chat said, said like, Efab responded to you. Chat? Oh, definitely, yeah. That's what I mean. So, Jay, because Efab, because Sargon. Okay, well, I thought given to the fact, I mean, you know.
given to the fact that it was made by another person. Yes, yeah, so this is what Hassan did. For the majority of the time, my name and the video's title aren't on screen. This information is only made visible when his- Yeah, he called us, he called us the kill stream. He said we were the Nazi kill stream. Nice. <laughs> oh, I forgot about that. Setup requires it to be. He doesn't attempt to share any kind of link to any of my work in any way. He doesn't attempt to give me any credit or shout me out. I don't need him to do literally all of those things, but for him to make no attempt to do absolutely any of them when without permission, he's freebooting the work of an independent creator he knows absolutely nothing about. Yes, that is absolutely taking the fucking piss. And on top of that, okay, I know I said that he played my video in full, but uh, I, I lied to you a little bit. He plays all of the content of the video, but then right at the end when I just take 20 seconds to talk about other stuff I'm working on and where you can find it, well, he turns it off before I can say any of that stuff. <laughs> Groove Why? industry. That's everything I have for you today. <laughs> this has just been a very small project on the side look at it, look as I work on something much bigger. My full critique and breakdown of season 11 okay, and I'm gonna 12. I'm going to add you into the call. Yeah, I mean, he wants to be in. Um... Wow, good job he did that. This was becoming dangerously close to an interaction that would have benefited both of us instead of just him. Even Jinx knew to shout out the video yes. he was reacting to. This is a crazy amount of just taking... I'm starting to wonder if base just means what an asshole. <laughs> base, <laughs> Hassan, you're just jealous that this guy's on his grind <laughs> set and you're a fucking loser that can't grind as hard as he can. He doesn't have time. He doesn't have time to watch your fucking shoutouts. He's got to go eat somebody else's content, dude. <laughs> what a god. I mean, he's still doing it to this day, that legend. Other people's work for granted. No consideration is given to the fact that the work here was done by someone else. Again, my point here isn't that I desperately want Hassan to shout me out. I don't need that. I don't want that. I am fine. The point is that this is his attitude when making reaction content, and he could end up doing this to anyone. The point of this video isn't like a petition to get me the recognition I deserve for my joke about how there are two toilets next to each other. The point of this video is to discuss a certain type of reaction content content, the arguments that get used to justify it, and why all of those arguments are bullshit. But where am I going to get examples of these arguments? Well, when I found out that Hassan had freebooted my content, similar to Jack's films, I went live to <laughs> satirize him of 8800 Blue Lick Road. If we start at the entrance, you're greeted by a Minions brand doormat that really no home is complete without. Sure, but I think we might have found the toilet soda culprit. Now, if we go across the hall from the man cave, we'll find ourselves in the second bathroom of the property. <laughs> now, that urinal in a residential bathroom- Finally, a got a laugh decision. out of you. So, it's a, it's a house that- <laughs> Jesus Christ. Used to belong to a church, but then- This is top tier um, satire, they, okay. eBay resellers just like made it into their eBay house or something? Is that what it is? Yeah. Uh, you think Donkey ripped you off as well? Uh, yeah, Donkey covered the, uh, the same house. The thing is, a few people have covered it, and I wasn't the first one to cover it. I was the first person to do it as a YouTube video, like a fully edited thing, as far as I know. <laughs> um, but like a few Twitch streamers went and had a look at it and did live reactions to it, and that's how I found out about it. So maybe Donkey found out about it the same way that I did. Maybe he saw my video as well, but you know, he made, he did his own spin on it. He didn't just play my video in full while saying very little, um, or just not being in the room. He made his own video. Like, just to be clear, you can react to my content on stream. I encourage that. Please go for it. But react. Do it in a transformative way where it's reasonable for people to assume that the thing they're there for is you. And also make it clear where to find the video if people want to check it out and like, you know, that's, 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 that's what I do whenever I cover someone else's content on stream. Uh, I make it clear where they can go to go and check, except today, fuck that. Um, but I normally make it clear where they can go to go and check it out. I tell them to check it out if they liked it, unless it's like something that I, that I'm criticizing like very strongly, in which case I don't really feel that it's. That one's interesting because uh, there's an argument to be made that when you're being heavily critical of a channel, if you link them, that you're sending people to them to you know, say horrible things or whatever. Yeah. So, uh, I don't know, the ethics get confused in that one because people would simultaneously condemn you for either not linking their details or linking their details. Like, guys, there's this really bad website with child porn. Uh, it's a horrible thing. <laughs> uh, check the link out in the description below. Oh my and, god, uh... <laughs> you're brigading them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I can understand the conflicting feelings of that, yeah. That, that there would be any benefit to saying go and check this out because it's like that would feel very artificial and I'm like this is shit go check it out so then I don't say go check it out but I still make it clear where to find it or at least try to oh by the way that donkey video I'm talking about in this clip and this is an empty deck of cards 
Where are they? Huh? Yeah, Hassan has covered that video as well. Here they are. This is where I play Pretty great reaction. Right. That's the next meta, bro. Me. Reacting He's to reactions of shit without saying or doing anything. <laughs> that image of Hassan's chair is in every Twitter thread about this topic. <laughs> I love it. Literally Jesus. the entire that runtime chair of that video. Is fighting for its life for most popular <laughs> chair on the internet. It's that chair and Sneeko's chair. Which one's gonna win out in the end? We'll find out. And I have no idea if Donkey would be okay with this. Like, I don't fucking know Donkey, man. But apparently they're friends, so hopefully. So after I finished my YouTube live stream, the comments started rolling in, which, you know, is what happens always. And at first I got exactly the kind of comments I would expect to. Can't wait to see Hassan react to this reaction. Lamau. I really enjoy Hassan's stream and was watching during this. I also thoroughly enjoy your content. I was pretty disappointed he didn't shout you out. Hassan isn't reacting. What is he even adding to the conversation? He wasn't even in a room for four minutes. Jay has eaten too much cardboard for my liking. You know, the normal stuff. But after some time had passed, eventually a cascade of new comments came in with a somewhat different tone to them. Try more? What a baby. Literally wouldn't even know who you are if it wasn't for Hassan streaming your video, but keep <laughs> drama baiting, lol. What a baby. Yeah. What could possibly have happened? I think they're mad because, uh, their Mac is like, you know, I, they're, uh, what, it's just it's just the fucking video that I had up while I was cooking. I Hassan ended up spending like 30 minutes talking about all of this live on Twitch. And we will be taking a look at what he said, but what's way more interesting to me right now is the fact that as a result of this stream, loads of his fans appeared in my comments making arguments as to why they think this kind of reaction content is okay. This is why I find Hassan's reaction to my video to be the perfect example to discuss the wider issue. It comes ready packaged with countless examples of what people actually think about this kind of thing. So without further ado, I'll sit down, pour myself a nice refreshing glass of beans, and go over some of the arguments that are made in favor of this kind of reaction. And also, yes, I use YouTube in light mode. Feel free to boost my algorithm rating by leaving a comment complaining about it if you like. I'll admit that's fucked up. Uh, it's probably the biggest flaw in the whole video. It's probably blinding people at home right now, but hey. People that anyway. freak out over light mode. Bro, who the fuck cares? Y'all motherfuckers are weird. Isn't that the meme? They don't actually care. They're just making fun of them. I dark don't know. Some people get real mad about light mode and dark mode shit. I, I don't know. I think I watch all my shit know, in light mode. You do? Yeah, who cares? Oh, all right, that's I mean, I thought more of you, but that's okay. Hey, on to the arguments. I'm not the biggest Hassan fan, but I feel a lot of streamers just watch random videos to react to while they eat, so I don't feel like it's that bad that he does this. Everyone's doing it, so it's okay. Um, I, I feel like this is an argument you've made, by the way. Um, Everybody doing something doesn't necessarily make it okay, but it can make it confusing. Um. Like, if everybody's doing something and nobody's complaining, then one day some people start to complain, it gets weird. This is why in the U.S., if you have a trademark, you have to enforce it, right? And otherwise you lose it, because it sets, like, weird precedents, yeah. But, I mean, it's obviously that's going to depend on the what we're talking about, right? Yeah, I just, um, I feel like it's, it's, you don't want to have to deal with this. It's like, fuck it, everyone's doing it, whatever. It doesn't seem to be that big of an issue. And it's like, okay, yeah, but maybe. do you actually find it an issue or not? Sure, but, I mean, like, theoretically, like, people... The like a um, a movie company could theoretically go after you guys for like doing the every frame of pause, right? Um, if like in that scenario, I don't know the because this is the problem with that is mm -hmm. the what we do is like fucking insanely transformative as far as I'm concerned. But mm -hmm. if we got hit with something from like Disney, then yeah, I'd probably have to back down because I have no idea if I would be able to actually like fight like in a serious like they were gonna sue me. Yeah, but I also that's also like I don't even know who would prevail. Like even if you had like unlimited legal funds, like is it actually fair use? Like because if you were doing the that's same, that's actually like, a good point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now this isn't to say that what you're doing is right or what someone is doing is wrong or justify any of this content. I'm just saying that that's how I can understand the arguments of like if a thing has been allowed for so long and then all of a sudden everybody gets mad about it, that can be really confusing. It's like well, this has kind of been like how everybody's been operating for a long time. Like was it actually bad? Now there are probably some examples where it's clearly wrong, um, but I think there are other examples where it can get more hazy. But yeah. Well, yeah, because uh, there are, I assume you're the same with this. There's a lot of things that are illegal that I would consider absolutely moral. So, you know, someone could be breaking yeah, like, the law I mean, in a particular way, and I'd be like, I don't care about that. That's fine. True, like smoking weed. Yes, that's one of the best ones, yeah. yeah. I think it's bad that everyone's doing this, but also this is literally just an appeal to popularity fallacy. Um, 
Next. I watch Hassan pretty frequently, and I honestly think it's because he was eating, Lamau. Content quality usually takes a nosedive for that half an hour. He's usually good about crediting channels and sharing his thoughts throughout. A lot of the time he's leaving or eating because he literally streams for 10 plus hours a day and he's got to do it sometime. And the chat needs to be entertained. You get like the underlying thing with a lot of these counters is like they agree it's bad, but that it's it's happening. Everyone's doing it. It's got to happen. This is the reason why it's, it's just like, oh. All we really want to get out there is that it's not a good thing. Hmm. As you're yeah, eating. <laughs> I agree. Fuck. I just got a weird thing that I've been into. Um, no, I understand. Yeah, that's not really a good justification. Yeah. In the meantime, but I do agree it's annoying when he does this. Lol. These comments. Why don't you guys start a Twitch and react your way? This whole leaving, eating, etc. is just a constant stream meme combined with actually satisfying certain human needs, like peeing and eating. Also, he streams like 8 hours a day. You can't expect him to clown around energetically for every minute of those 8 hours. He literally leaves to cook for himself. Good for fucking him. Pause the video then. That video was literally randomly linked by someone in chat. Take it out of context, you guys make him sound like Hitler. You guys are too <laughs> judgmental. Jeez. Yeah. Don't my left God. my body reading that. Man, I remember history class in middle school learning about how people were always critical of Hitler's Twitch streams. You know, that's the main complaint people had at the time about Hitler. Three rules of being a streamer. One, react harder. Two, don't pause too much to react. It disrupts the content. Three, don't cook or eat food. You are a content slave and not allowed to leave frame for more than 30 seconds on an 8 to 12 hour stream. Can I just say, yeah. God damn. I wish I had a son's fan base. I'm gonna be banning you guys my server <laughs> until you guys fall in line like this. Cause these guys, these are the simp masters. Would Hell. you want this though? Hell they look like yeah, idiots. Bro. <laughs> these guys carry his torch forward into the world. They're doing work, dude. God damn. These guys are balling out hard. I respect it. Hell yes. Okay, so Notters. The idea that streamers need to do this because they've got to eat comes up semi-regularly. Hassan himself has even made similar arguments on multiple occasions. And of course there is truth to this. It is absolutely reasonable for any streamer who's live for 13 hours a day to have periods of low energy, to eat and to piss and shit everywhere. We all need downtime and to expect someone to not have any is completely unreasonable. Therefore, I need to just play other people's videos. I have no other choice. Don't cook or eat food. You are a content slave and not allowed to leave frame for more than 30 seconds on an 8 to 12 hour stream. 28. What the fuck are you talking about, you muppet? You lemon? You cabbage? You fucking rhombus? This person has seen me say it's bad to just stream other people's content in full without sufficient commentary or sufficient credit and is so absorbed into Twitch culture that they can't conceive of another way to eat. Speaking as someone who streams semi-regularly and has been known to stream for longer than 12 hours in one go, there are plenty of other ways to take downtime, which isn't something I should have to explain to anyone. If you're a streamer and you reach a point in your stream where you feel that for whatever reason you're unable to fully entertain your audience by yourself, here are a few things you can try. Bring on a guest who can do most of the talking while you're away. This highway code applies to England, Scotland and Wales. The highway code is essential reading for everyone. Play something made by a creator who you know is happy for their content to be used in this way. Play your own streams or content. Just fucking end the stream, holy shit. And if all of these things and any other alternative also- Well, so you pass on this one. BRB screens are beautiful. Good job. Yeah, and my orbiters that come in and argue while I'm away, base. Yeah. <laughs> Seem like they're too much effort then. Sucks to be you. Take some pride in your work. Holy shit. You don't get to just take something someone else made. Just tell them not to react to your videos. Other streamers like Matt Orchard and JCS are saying that they love the boost in views they're getting from Hassan's reacts. It's not clear that Jay would be opposed to it. If you didn't say enough in this video, then fair enough. Not everyone does their best all the time. How about just telling him not to do that instead of pulling this cringe shit? The sentiment that I have no right to complain because I could just ask Hassan not to do this again in future is another seeming pretty common one, but there are a few problems with it that I would like to get into. First and foremost, I have no idea how to contact Hassan. I couldn't find an email address listed for him. This is probably a bigger mistake, because there are plenty of ways you probably could get his attention, but it should be relevant that he's not gonna respond. Yeah, uh, and you probably shouldn't have, if there, if there should be a business email if you're in the business of doing this stuff like pretty readily available. If people can't find out how to contact you, that's probably your problem. You right? can, especially if you're a relatively popular content creator, you'll be able to get a pretty liked tweet, like asking them or whatever, but 
Yeah, I don't but know it kind of sucks if you have to like if that's your goal. You have to try to like get them. Well, like, yeah. I mean, yeah. what do you think about the whole like? It's it, we're clearly in a position of we don't want to ask permission. We'd rather ask forgiveness. Uh, seems to be well, the, if you don't think the thing is necessarily wrong, then I mean that's the that's part of the issue, right? Well, but they clearly do, right? If they're willing to take things down and stop the second anyone complains, because it seems like they're ready. They're like, I know what your argument's going to be, so just let me know. Um, maybe I don't know. I don't know what to think about it. Seems that way. His DMs are closed on every social media of his that I checked, and I guess I could have tried adding him on Twitter, but he has a million Twitter followers and gets added like every couple of minutes. So, I mean, he might see it, and maybe there is a way I could easily contact him, but for all the looking I did, I couldn't find one. So if he really does run on a model of I will just repost your content and if you don't like it, you have to reach out to me to tell me to stop, which, like, yeah he does, then there being no way clear from the outside looking in to get in touch with him is kind of a problem with that. And that's just problem one. It might, although probably hasn't, occurred to you to wonder how I even found out about this in the first place. Did Hassan send me a message letting me know he'd reacted to my video? Or maybe he left a YouTube comment telling me he'd done it. Or maybe my comment section filled up with his fans, all telling me that he'd sent them. No, I actually found out because by sheer coincidence, on the day that he did it, I just randomly out of the blue started to wonder, oh, how's that old video I made that one time about that weird house doing? And went into my analytics to check. And it's only because on a whim I made that decision that I happened to see what I already recognized as the distinct spike of someone live reacting to my video. 200 extra views to a full-time YouTuber is an entirely negligible amount. But a spike of that amount all at the same time and all on a video that's averaging about 50 views an hour is very clearly a sign of something, so I took to Twitter to ask if anyone knew what had happened, and it's only after all that that someone told me Hassan had reacted to the video. So maybe reaching out to Hassan is something that I could have tried on that occasion, but streamers operating under the assumption that if a creator doesn't like their work being reposted, they could just get- And would you say at this point that DMCA is the option? Um, well he didn't try reaching out to him at all, right? Uh, I don't know if he actually sent any tweets also, at Hassan, but obviously this got Hassan's attention, the video. Sure. Also, um, was this something that got uploaded to YouTube or was this just on stream? That's a good question. I'm not actually sure. Yeah. Uh, again, like, I if don't, it were, like, though. for nuclear options and PR reasons, like, I don't know if DMCA first would be the, like, the best thing, but I think if somebody did DMCA Hassan, I don't think you can complain, right? Like, if that yeah, guy, no, like, when that. I watched um, that JFK video yesterday, like, if that dude, like, had DMCA'd my stream afterwards, like... There's not really much I can say. It's like, I mean, yeah. <laughs> like, I might get don't you like, think that belies the, like the, the fact that you don't think it's ethical necessarily? The fact that you wouldn't fight that at all? You're like, yeah, you got me. I mean, it, it's just so weird around like the copyright stuff. Like, theoretically, if I'm playing video games and they're like songs I'm playing in the background and somebody comes and DMCA's me for songs, like, that's technically fair as well. But, uh, um, yeah. The, just where we're at with like online content creation and like technically this guy right now that we're watching could be could live DMC on my stream because he feels like it's not transformed enough and legally technically he would be okay to do that and we could fight it out. It's that just is like, true. Yeah, it's just like such a it's such a weird area. Yeah, I guess what yeah, I'm trying okay. to say. Yeah. Um, I guess what you're almost uh, alluding to is like there's law and morals getting crossed over a little bit here. Like you know that legally they probably have a position to do that, like the Lemino video. And so you they just at least leave have it. a leg to stand on, yeah. But that you would consider yourself morally in the clear, then. Um, I think so, but everything around copyright is so weird. It's hard to know, like morally, like what's in the right or wrong. Like I think all of my feelings here are very, um, not ambivalent, um, very, like m murky. Well, here's a question: Is that yeah. getting uploaded to your YouTube channel? The Lamino coverage. It shouldn't be. If it does, August is fucking fired. <laughs> okay, there you go. I don't know. That feels like it answers the question better. Just the fact that you would choose not to re-upload it. Well, but I think there's like there's also the question before that the other two guys are saying when they were in here of like it cross-platform stuff feels a little bit different too, right? Um, I'm not because they brought that up earlier. I, I wasn't sure how I feel about that one because it's like it pulls both directions. I know that my videos get chewed up and put onto TikTok. Yeah. And people, like, I've got a friend who's like, why aren't you stopping that? And I was like, oh, fuck, I, I don't even know if I can be bothered to go through the hassle of figuring out how TikTok works and finding these accounts and doing it, as opposed to just, I'm just going to do my thing. Mm -hmm. But I, of course, think it's bullshit. That if there's, like, clips of my videos that get millions of views on there and someone's made a whole fucking career out of it, it's like, what the hell? 
I don't even know. I, I have no. If if like a wizard said, "Oh, that gets you um, zero engagement on your own channel," then of course I'm annoyed. But if they say it gets you loads, I'm like, I still don't know how I feel about that. Um, I was gonna say most people probably wouldn't care because yeah, the viewership crossover is so unrelated that like if you got 10 billion views on a clip on TikTok, it probably didn't even take a single view from YouTube because the audiences are just so different. But then, so that's why I feel like people would feel differently. Like even um, real quick, even among a lot of these rack um, or the YouTube people, I think a lot of the YouTube people, I don't know how much they care when I've seen them talk about it, like people live reacting to their content versus like the uploading to YouTube is where people get really scared about the viewership cannibalization. Uh, I guess the thing is though, that I probably would care if I just engaged with it more and actually did take them down and then I chewed up my own videos and put them on TikTok and then it turns out, what if I started making more money on there than I do on YouTube? It's like, oh shit. Like, it's like, I still see all of this as the fact that it's the Wild West still vaguely, like we're the latter terms of that on the internet, mm -hmm. but that all this stuff is not regulated properly and we don't even know that most of it's happening. I think uh, Short Fat Otaku said he's, he's trying to put his videos on TikTok even though he can't monetize them yet in prep for when he finally can once they have like a Canadian option, I guess. Sure. So like it's it's all so young, all of this crazy shit. And I still think that that's partly why the audience is all over the place. Mm -hmm. Because we don't know what all of the, so to speak, thought leaders have to say. That's why it's good to get these conversations going because it's confusing and the internet's rules are very fucking lax when it comes to all of this stuff. I'm not a fan of the fact that that's happening to my videos, and I wouldn't be on behalf of anyone else. And what's sort of funny about the Sniper Wolf stuff is that she'll be reacting to a video, and then Jax Films will figure out what the source is, and then he finds out the source is actually a group of seven TikToks that have been put into one, mm -hmm. a channel that takes them and collects them and then makes money off them. So then you find the source on that one, and it's like, oh shit, this is one with a hundred views that nobody gives a shit about, while Sniper Wolf has obviously gone all the way up to, like, several million. Yeah. And, like, who's gonna stop that? Who even recognizes that it's happening? And again, that's sort of my argument for why I feel like the noise is, is getting more and more um, crazy. That's probably why. Hmm. Get in touch doesn't work if nine times out of 10, the creators have no idea it's even happening. I found out about this dream because of a frankly, very unlikely coincidence, but I almost certainly don't know about the majority of times that my videos have been reacted to on Twitch. Why would I know? And yeah, on this occasion, I did know. I could have tried getting in touch with Hassan by adding him on Twitter, I guess, but as a more general rule, I don't think that it should be the job of creators to keep an eye on every Twitch streamer to make sure they're not reposting their content. It's not that I don't want this to happen again, it's that I don't think this should have happened in the first place. I'm not a big fan of the precedent of reactors seeming to think they can freeboot anyone's work they want to, and if the creator doesn't like it, then it's their responsibility to find out and get in touch. You're not allowed to watch any YouTube videos unless you react the exact way the creator wants you to, the rules of the internet. You are a fucking rhombus. Reactors can use other people's content as a springboard to create whatever kind of content they want to. From Soot House to Scalagrim, I am a supporter of the reaction content genre. I make reaction content and I don't feel the need to ask the permission of the original creators first because I am always careful to make sure I am adding something and not just freebooting their work. The reaction that this person is defending with you're just mad they didn't react in exactly the way you want is this. And if we look by the kitchen, in sync, you'll notice uh, toothbrush, toothpaste, mouthwash, and other toiletry supplies, despite the house having multiple bathrooms. This feels like the kind of choice that would only be made by someone who has truly ascended to a high plane of thought. Maybe they only feel comfortable cleaning their teeth if they're accompanied by this dense foliage from the living room. Now, your front kitchen has these two completely freestanding cabinets in the middle of the room, built as a massive bedroom, but the house still has some surprises in store. We've got a very important shelf. <laughs> And this isn't just one isolated comment. A depressing number of people seem to not even understand that there's a distinction between reaction content that adds to or transforms the original work and reaction content that just lets the original work play for several minutes at a time while the reactor eats. They just don't get it. It's all just reaction content to them. Uh, Jay's entire content Content? No, that's not what it says. That's all! Jay's entire channel revolves around him making content that only reacts to other people's content or analyzes it. There's no difference between what Jay is doing here and what he's complaining about Hassan doing. Jay is pathetically drama baiting over something that in essence would require him to delete 90% of his channel's videos if he was serious about not- I think this is indicative of the fact that nobody fucking knows what's going on or really is- Yeah, people like, are just familiar mad. With. Everyone's mad at each other, yeah, and they're all saying crazy shit. Mm -hmm. um, on both sides. Serious about not using other people's content. When Hassan leaves, he's making. I oh know. Let's do. Let's do this one in a Scottish accent. When Hassan leaves, he's me. <laughs> when Hassan leaves, he's making food in his kitchen that's right next to his desk, so he can come back whenever. 
Good for him. Also, you use footage from shows that people put more time into as background footage. And yes, it's fair use. But if you're going to criticize someone for reacting, then I will criticize your use of footage that isn't technically yours. So yeah, a lot of the content on my channel is reviews of movies or shows, and I use footage of those movies and shows to show what I'm talking about. Although I don't really feel that I need to explain the kind of thing that I do, because you've been watching it for 30 minutes. And it's distinctly different from just letting someone else's content play as you cook, eat, and occasionally make vague or vacuous comments. If someone genuinely can't tell what the difference is here, I struggle to understand how I could even begin to explain it to them. It's like if an adult came up to me and asked, hey, what's the difference between, like, a seagull and jealousy? I would not know what part of that they were struggling with. The icing on the cake for all of this is that when all of these people scroll down to the comments section, my pinned comment was right there, explicitly stating that I'm fine with actual reaction content and I just don't want my video used as filler. And then the cherry on the icing on the cake is this person's bizarre claims. You seem to have worked really hard to create this content. It's super scummy when someone just takes something and essentially copies the video without any substantial differences or changes. Looks like these guys copied your content too. I hate it when people just use other creators' content. Oh wait, that video was made two whole months before yours. Hmm, seems like you just might be milking this for content. This comment is wild to me. That YouTube link takes you to the archive of a Yogscast stream where they look at the same house I looked at in my video. I'm, I'm impressed that whoever filmed this went and actually was willing to go into these rooms. Yeah. They're reacting to the same stuff, but in it they make different jokes and say different things. This person can't even tell the difference between a non-transformative reaction and two people making videos about the same thing. And I think this is all very much motivated by the fact that they enjoy the fuck out of Hassan sitting there even. It doesn't matter. It's just just the guy and that goes the same for all of us i suppose true but it's um not something you overreact to you can calm the fuck down and talk it through you seemed explosive at the beginning of this stream I feel chill now though who me yeah you seem chill now. yeah i'm explosive over how unhinged people get on like things that weren't like Fuck, I should go back and read some of my subreddit comments. People were like in, people were <laughs> losing their minds. There were like 700 comment threads over like one of the most innocuous like things on the internet. I wonder if I can find some comments, hold on. Like I said though, everyone can get, you know, there's crazy people everywhere. Yeah, I know, but it's just like th this particular thing is like, it's such a small blip like in the, and I don't even mean like a small blip like, oh, it's just like two black guys killed by the cops and it's like data wise, but it's just, um. It's like, it's like even the people that are affected don't even know if they're actually even being harmed or not. Um, yeah, I don't know. The, some of the comments even on my subreddit and then on Twitter especially have been like unhinged. Well, I mean, actually it was a lot more than two. The house was kind of a meme, so. Lol, just react harder. Hey, Jay, react harder. My man said react like harder. Here, oh, here's react a comment. I'm sorry, hold on. I just want, some of these are just really Hey, go for it. Okay. Let's just be honest with each other. This is all because streamers think they're micro celebrities. Their ego is so big that they think their mere reactions to original content that may have taken months to make should be treated as equivalent in monetization by the YouTube algorithm. They're trying to build a platform and you're, ju and you're just not that famous, bro. Chill out. Now leave this bullshit drama. Play your little game while you charge some guy $80 to call in and ask if men and women can be friends or not. <laughs> Edit. Got banned. <laughs> Obligatory Destiny is a cuck. We'll be using my other alts, DGGL. You ain't getting away with your shit this time, you slippery self is not like, bro. Oh. Like, and this this comment, and it's not like these are down with people. In my subreddit, this got 214 upvotes. Like, bro, are you, what is Dude, happening? Did you ever wonder, <laughs> with, with how many people you banned, do you ever wonder that, like, it's irrelevant because everyone just knows to make more accounts ahead no, of No, I time. think that's probably <laughs> what they do. But it's the fact that it gets upvoted. It's like, bro, first of all, streamers literally are micro celebrities. If, if they're not celebrity celebrities, like, a lot of these streamers are really fucking big yeah true so it's just like such a it's such a bizarro like um oh yeah here's one lol destiny is backing the youtube version of organized retail theft stealing goods because of a lack system and reselling it elsewhere his justification is they don't call the cops so it's okay like well the problem with organized retail theft is you're comparing actual theft of items that are causing stores to close down are there youtubers that have stopped like making content because so many react streamers stole their shit like holy shit that one got that was like a third month oh this one why don't rapes get reported must not be a problem <laughs> yeah man <laughs> 
Let him, let him have their perspective. You don't need to ban him. Let him, you know, he's, there's plenty of people who would argue against him. Oh, it's it, and it's content when you get to read them out, you know, and talk about it. But yeah, okay. Well, the thing is, after what you said about the whole copyright shouldn't extend probably for about a year, mm -hmm. it sounds like you, your view on intellectual property versus let's say regular property is something that you should let your audience know about like no, they more have. explicitly they, maybe the problem is we've gotten we've gotten a lot of um we've done a lot of like debate recently over like defensive property and there's a guy in my community pisco and he likes to argue the most like extreme vo versions of anything i have so he uh -huh. obviously he likes to dip into intellectual property a lot but obviously there are huge differences between intellectual property and like actual property um materially right because theoretically an infinite number of people could steal a piece of intellectual property but they're not necessarily depriving you of the property itself. They're depriving you of like rents from the property, which is fundamentally a different thing. Not to say that like one is okay and one isn't, but um, yeah. Also, I respect your um, intentions to purify your subreddit, but it is Reddit. You ain't doing that. It's never gonna happen. It, oh, no, gonna well, I know, but like Jesus, the unhinged <laughs> comments. No, yeah, and then it makes you unhinged. I mean, it can anyway. At least you feel that way, right? You wanna be like, okay, these people i'm gonna go after them oh well, i do and i ban them all it feels good and off they go every meme that's every streamer turns off the critical thinking part of their brain when it comes to this issue the amount of mental gymnastics and insecurity in tweets discussing this is something to behold kind of expected more from destiny <laughs> oh <laughs> hey maybe he likes this stream that guy <laughs> that was just one thread there are like four <laughs> huge threads that like went up with us and it's like Jesus, yeah. But anyway. Oh, hey man, you know, it's, uh, it's good to know that there's a lot of pushback and push forward, and that you can figure this out. You can direct them. You can let them know they're the pit falling, right? Oh, don't worry. They've all fallen into the same pit. Well, they'll cr crawl Oof. out with different Reddit accounts <laughs> in a couple weeks. Uh, yeah. So I was like, did you read what out that said he's prepped with another account? So. Oh, yeah, there were a couple of them where the people will tweet, like, getting onto my 15th Reddit account just to let Destiny know that he's a massive <laughs> cuck fucking hypocritical loser fuck whose content I will no longer be supporting. Like, people, it's just like, bro, holy shit. Sorry, go ahead. Wow. How much, wait, how much, what's the time left in this video? We are at uh, 35 out of 56. Um, 35, wait, say that again, sorry. 35 minutes out of 56 minutes. Jesus. Okay, go for it. That's a chonker. Been used to try and satirize people who are critical of non transformative Twitch reactions. The sentiment behind it is that if a reaction streamer doesn't find the content they're watching particularly engaging, they're not going to have a particularly strong reaction. If you're there for their genuine reaction to the content they're watching and their reaction really is very minimal, then surely by asking them to change that reaction, you're asking them to be fake. You can't control your emotions. It's not their fault if they didn't have an emotional response to the thing they're watching. As this commenter sums it up, if your problem is react hard, Harder, then my reply is create harder and maybe you'd get those better reactions. <laughs> the entire wall on this side of the room <laughs> so is true. The videos are boring. That's the problem. <laughs> to what slide a out chad. So that you can, if you want, merge this room with the room next to it. So if you live here, you can finally achieve your dreams of a bedroom kitchen combo. Finally, now I can sleep in a room that has two separate microwaves in it. You know, the having two of something completely unnecessarily is becoming a running theme. You know who reacted hard? Jinx. It says gullible on the ceiling. Oh, so it oh, you stole my lungs. <laughs> in his videos, Jinx was always laughing and smiling and soy facing. He We've very come clearly full demonstrated circle. a strong emotional yep, response. Jinx is now better than XQC and oh, no. Hassan and yeah, look at where we are. It was we've tumbled. So the content he was reacting to, and people seem to forget this. All the same problems that apply to these modern Twitch streamers also apply to Jinx's content. Love that this video was made so fucking long ago, and one of the examples is reacting to a Lemino video. This uh, <laughs> shows you how far we've come. Hey. If Hassan had been grinning from ear to ear for the entirety of his reaction to my video, that wouldn't have fixed the issue. Summing up the criticism as react harder does make it sound unreasonable, because saying react harder would be unreasonable. But summing it up as contribute something would be a lot more accurate. My man said contribute something, man. Make your reaction stream a meaningfully different experience to watching the original video. It's not just a matter of react harder. A sun stream is great. Watch it every day. It seem awfully sour over here, lol. Enjoy the signal boost he gave you, Lamal. Literally wouldn't know who you are if it wasn't for Hassan streaming your video, but keep drama baiting, lol. <laughs> 
What a baby. Imagine being such a fragile little person that you're mad someone looked at your video oh, and brought fragile. attention to your channel, but doesn't react harder or the way you wanted. Sad. The idea that I should just shut up and be thankful for the free clout is another pretty common one. And to that, my immediate thought is that you are grossly overestimating the amount of clout this kind of thing provides. Somewhere between 150 and 180 of Hassan's fans came to watch my video following his stream, which on average translates to a grand total of about 40 cents and seven subscribers. So, thanks, I guess? Now, I'm sure that mileage will vary from different streamers reacting to different videos. Some reactions will provide more and some reactions will provide less. As a streamer, it's possible you'll provide someone clout by doing this, but you certainly can't base your behavior on the assumption that that's definitely what will happen, which is what Hassan does. People ask like, well, what's up? Like, aren't you taking views away? No, most YouTubers don't mind that, actually love that shit when Twitch streamers react to their videos because they That's get a, a fucking word. fat bump. Best. On the topic of taking views away though, it's unclear that if by doing this, streamers take away potential viewers from the videos they're reacting to. It's entirely possible that some of the 40,000 live viewers of that stream would have ended up watching the video, but now they've already seen it, won't bother. This isn't the kind of thing that YouTube analytics can tell us, so we just don't know. It is also interesting that everyone seems to be overestimating the amount of clout that this kind of thing provides. Uh, no, sir. I don't want the free cloud. It's not free cloud if he doesn't say whose video it is. What the fuck? Uh, had the channel name and name of the video up the entire time. Uh, no, he didn't. But also, yeah, you are allowed to say no to this kind of thing. That's allowed. I imagine that if PewDiePie, being the largest individual creator on YouTube, downloaded and then just re-uploaded one of my videos to his channel, that'd probably get me some clout. I imagine that if Will Smith broke into my apartment and started filming me for his next movie, that'd get me some free clout as well, which is not equivalent, just to be clear. And you know what? I would happily let Will Smith into my apartment to film me for a movie, but the key with all of these things is permission. You can't just go around imposing this kind of give and take exchange on people without knowing whether or not they'd agree to it, especially when what you're giving is 40 cents. So those are the arguments in favor of this kind of thing, and I've got to say, I wasn't particularly impressed. While I'm here, I would like to thank Metal Commander, Cynical CJ, Blair TV, Nicholas Diorio, and the Virtual- Ugh, credit. I think we could skip this part, right? Should be able to find uh, a way. True, the especially when I heard that Nicholas it. name. Fuck that guy. Oh. The comments in that last section. And I would like to let you know that the file the Virtual Celebrity sent me started like this. I sincerely apologize if you can hear chickens in the background. Sat down to record. They were fucking up the storm. Went out to chase them away, threw rocks at them, well not at them, near them, tiny pebbles. They thought the rocks were food. Yeah, you can hear chickens in the background of the clips that she sent me. Um, she also, later of her own free will, decided to send me a second version without chickens in the background, but I elected to use the chicken one. I'm a bad person. Hopefully, after all of that, I've done my part to put a dent in the attitude that Twitch streamers can just play other people's content in full without permission without transforming it in any way. I've seen a lot of streamers taking other people's content for granted like this, and honestly, it's just not cool. But this video is not a personal attack directed towards any streamer who's ever done this. I just want to encourage those streamers to hopefully, well, first things first, give proper credit. Especially if your justification for doing what you're doing is that you paid the content creators through exposure by giving them a fat bump. Ultimately though, there is of course <laughs> no one bum. correct way to do reaction content. It's just a matter of- Anything's fucked up though, they use the arguments, but obviously he doesn't give a shit and doesn't confirm it, doesn't want to make sure it happens. You don't give a fuck whatsoever. But it's a useful argument. What? Wait, what What do you mean by that? The, the exposure stuff. Like, oh. uh, the point that I think you agree with, right, is that a fat bump shouldn't really constitute a hundred and, what was that, like 50 views extra on a video? Well, no, that's not a very fat bump at all, I would say. No, not really. So he's using that shield, as would be provided by anyone else who's making actual, like, cogent arguments against this. When he doesn't give a fuck, he's just going to take advantage of all of it anyway. Because I think one of those comments you read out earlier that I thought was interesting was, do you believe any, is it possible that any of these streamers, especially the higher up ones, know what they're doing, understand the damage, and are like, yeah, but I can get away with it? Well, I mean, to be clear, we still don't know the damage, if there is damage, right? No, I'm saying let's let's pretend. Do you, do you believe there could be someone who actually believes there is damage but doesn't doesn't really oh, mind? wouldn't give a fuck. Um, I mean, yeah, there's always going to be people like that. That is possible, yeah. But I think that like if damage was apparent and clear, and we all agreed on it. I think public pressure would very quickly 
make that style of content like unpopular i think people would stop i think i think that would happen and i actually think it is going to happen mm -hmm. eventually i think that this is getting louder and louder each time it pops up and i'm curious what's going to happen next yeah i guess we'll see what happens yeah matter of mutual respect between creator and reactor and not taking anyone else's work for granted. Now let's take a look at what Hassan said about all this in response to my stream. The YouTuber who made the video about the strange house not Dunky is mad at you it's reacting to Hassan Abi's original stuff. content that he worked really hard on and made all by himself. Why? Because I was cooking while that was happening. Is that why? Hassan if you see this I'm happy for you to react to my videos. If proper credit is given, however, please don't just let them play as filler, sitting there saying very little and just having lunch or leaving them in the room. Like, come on, man, I'm fine with React content. It just requires a substance or significant reaction to proper credit. Okay, fair. Oh, okay. He's taking it really well. <laughs> Good. That's okay. totally yeah. fine. He makes the most yep. sense. That's, That's nice to see, isn't it? I mean, That's great. I understand. Wait, is he about to do Sweet, some crazy shit? Come on, you know how you know how this works. Oh, Jay's no. obviously setting this up. No, 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 no. As long as we're is fine. Hold on. <laughs> Maybe we should have stopped the video right now. Hassan's response yeah, was totally we, we fine did. there. I thought that was totally fine. Hassan is, yeah, see, just like I said, if you make people aware that it's wrong, then they would stop, right? Great, yes, excellent, 100%. There's a little bit more of the video we could just toss on for the sake of it, though. Well, sure, not, if right? there's a little bit, maybe yeah, some credits, yeah. A little bit more, yeah, probably the credits. My man said react harder. Oh. So I have like 30 minutes of Hassan's <laughs> response to work with in my editing room here. If I was the kind of shady fuck to choose the clips I play with maximum bias, I could make Hassan look like a wonderful saint. I personally don't care. But if others do, then dude, absolutely. I will respect that 1000%. Or I could make him look like the biggest gaping asshole who ever lived. It's such a dingus, dude. Did they don't just show their no, channel name, dumbass? How is that so hard like what is this attitude that you have you stupid man <laughs> is that really about the guy no shot right no it, he's talking about yeah but like he's talking to someone who just said just show the fucking channel credits and he's like oh fuck off which is funny like yeah I just all he had to do is be, be like so yeah, mad. Well, <laughs> okay do. yeah the easiest win ever but it's his son. He finds a way. How are both those clips from the same stream? Well, all will be explained, and I feel that I need to start that explanation by giving credit where credit is due. You know, because giving credit is important. As soon as he found out that I didn't really appreciate his non-transformative reaction stream where he played my content, he apologized and made it clear that he wouldn't play any of my videos on his streams again. They have every right to be like, yeah, fuck off, dude. What the fuck are you watching my video? I will never watch uh, their stuff ever again, for the record. <laughs> If they're upset about it. If you don't want me watching your stuff, I will gladly never watch it. I'm really sorry. I apologize. What Hassan seems to have respect for is a YouTuber's right to opt out of something like this. If a content creator makes a fucking YouTube video and they're not happy with me like six months, Chad, watching, then I fucking won't watch it. Personally, I don't care. But if other YouTubers do care, then dude, absolutely. I'll, I just won't watch it. I personally... I don't care. Politics frog became okay, I, I get upset if they, they like use it to misrepresent it or anything like that. I personally don't care. But if others do, then, dude, absolutely, I will respect that. It's not okay to, uh, you know, play someone else's video if they don't want you to play it. And I mean, it is good that he has this attitude, but ultimately the phrase bare minimum does spring to mind like yeah him saying this is better than the alternative but the alternative would be him going i don't care how the creator feels i get to take whoever's content i want and and then doing an evil laugh saying sorry and promising not to play my videos on his streams anymore you know that's cool but then he does go ahead and follow it up with stuff like this you get yelled at for pausing and talking too much then you get yelled at for not reacting hard enough what are you supposed to do now i mean what, what the what do you mean? I I'm literally gonna do exactly what I've been doing, which is whatever the f I want to do, bitch. What, what are you talking about? I couldn't really ask for a more explicit declaration Bae. that he's not gonna change the way he does things. I am perfectly happy to be in the situation where Hassan's not gonna do this to one of my videos again. But I'm not really here to talk about me. I'm here to talk about generally the wider issue of React content, and nothing about that has been changed by this apology. Hassan even says that he's used to creators getting annoyed at him for this, and that this is just the standard apology that he issues out whenever that happens. But some content creators get upset about it and when they do i'm like i'm really sorry and i will never do this again 
And it's as simple as that. It could be argued that the reason he's happy to just make the same mistake over and over again is that it's more convenient for him to just apologize whenever he's called out than it would be for him to actually stop doing the thing he's apologizing for. He's apologized for upsetting me, but I was never really upset. I just think that what he's doing is piss. What he's not apologized for is what he's doing, which is the actual thing that I took issue with in the first place, and is something that he spends most of his stream arguing in favor of. A lot of the arguments he makes are the arguments we've handily already covered in this video. Like, um... I mean, this is, like, not that relevant, to be honest. Yeah, I walk away while this video is going on, because I'm fucking, uh, what do you call it? I'm cooking and I'm eating. And, uh, they didn't like my, uh, react. They were like, react harder. Their criticism, even if it's, like, react harder, is... That might be a bullshit criticism, but like, they're correct if, they, if they're if they like, I don't want you to react to my videos. And we've already been over the whole react harder thing. We don't need to go over it again. Hassan also seems to subscribe to the streamers need to do this because they're live for however many hours a day argument. He likes this one a lot, actually. It's normal to walk away uh, when you're fucking uh, live for 10 hours. You know what I mean? I like Hassan a lot, but it definitely puzzles me how zero content like this became so well received. I don't know. Maybe because I'm live for fucking eight hours. You could leave a sign saying gone for a dump back in five or could just give credit where it's due and actually react while he's in the room. Doesn't seem like a lot to ask. These motherfuckers are like, a dude, peanut bottle, dude. It just feels like Hassan wanted to not be streaming anymore. <laughs> this shit is unbelievable, right? Because I haven't seen you try this stuff, which is good. But... Well, the problem is right now, Hassan is conflating the complaints of the viewers with the complaints of the content creators. Because viewers will make these complaints. Either stop reacting so much or react hard or whatever. Those are complaints for the viewers and those are issues of the audience, but it's a fundamentally separate argument than the than what the people that are... Um... Well, I'm talking about the pee in a bottle one. Like, he thinks what's being said here is that mm -hmm. you cannot leave. It's like nobody's fucking well, saying that. Well, yeah, but that. no, there are people saying that, but it's the viewers saying that. But are they viewers saying you can't leave? Yeah, or they want you to stand stream all the time, or they get mad if you take like a ten or fifteen minute break or whatever. Yeah, they'll get like. I mean, you'll get people saying like, "Oh, this is fucking boring." The second you get up to go and piss, but like, yeah, no, no, fuck they're, they're whatever. Oh, yeah, I know, I know. But I'm just saying that Hassan's problem here is he's conflating the complaints of the viewers there with the content creators that are complaining about their content being bitten, basically. But like, you can just, I don't know, skip those ones. Like, who the f is what they have to say? Like, oh, I don't want you to be pee, and I want you to put something on that entertains oh, me. Oh, I'm like sorry, sorry. Are shit. you not familiar with the legend of the one guy? Wait, yeah, I've hang on. I was actually I always meant to ask you about this because it feels like Twitch culture stuff as opposed to YouTube. Even though you're like, what are you on now? YouTube, Kick, and Rumble? I don't know. I'm just on whatever. I'm on Kick. I'm know, a Kick streamer now. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, um, the whole because I, I hear Chud Logic saying all the time, getting one guide. Do you mean just talking about someone's arguments in chat? People. Streamers are very sensitive to their chats, and it's very easy for one guy in chat to say something that triggers the fuck out of you, and then you're stuck on that guy's comments forever. But, like, that's been a thing forever. Why did that get a name? I don't know. It's just, it's, it is it's a just thing. Fucking, but that's why just... when you're like, oh, we'll just ignore the crazy people in chat, that's not possible. Uh, <laughs> As streamers, we, we exist to get one guy. That's, like, part of our... Well, I was actually going to say, though, part of you guys' content is getting mad at one guy, so... Yeah. It's okay. I don't. I don't see any issue with you fucking finding someone in chat who said something dumb and and you know responding to it. That's fine. Yeah. I mean, it's not I don't always know why dumb. I call it's it one it's guy. Because it's one guy in chat says some shit. No, I mean like as as though it's a bad thing or a thing you need to avoid doing. Like that's how it's always presented. Oh, like I well, won't get one guy. Well, sometimes it's a bad thing because it'll be like one guy that's saying something like nobody else is really saying, but then you get hyper fixated on like one dipshit that says okay. something, and now yeah. I mean, it is funny, like highlighting someone saying, and I don't want you to go pee. That's funny. Yeah, it is. Because the stream will get more, but they don't want, and that's what want to lose those uh, stream dollars, like outside of the camera being on him. How is it any different than him just watching a YouTube video off stream? It just rubs me the wrong way. Like, how do you think of your viewers to just stream your break? Dude, what am I supposed to do? Die? Like, I don't understand. Hassan reacts to someone's suggestion that he could just put up a BRB screen or something by conflating that with them asking him to pee in a bottle at his desk. Yeah, those things are the same. The attitude that he needs to do this or he just can't have breaks is weird and flat out incorrect, but again, we've already covered it. He also makes the free clout argument, but he adds something to it that we've not seen before. Most YouTubers don't mind that, actually love that shit when Twitch streamers react to their videos because they get a fucking fat bump. We still have the free clout argument, but now it's also packaged Hell with yeah. the idea that most YouTubers support and like this kind of thing happening. Most other uh, content creators on YouTube and all around, don't give a shit if you watch their videos Asshole. or they like it. They literally like it. They want you to watch their videos. 
Please record your answer and send it to me. Would you be okay with it if a streamer played one of your videos in full on their stream without saying much or really adding anything? No. Fuck no. Uh, no I would not. Yes. No. Well, I mean, I could kind of do with it. Are they, are they willing to pay? No, I don't think I would be okay with the streamer playing one of my videos in its entirety without even really adding to it. If they give me a shout out and try to send people my way, then sure. But otherwise, no. 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 Oddly enough, I think I would be okay with it, but I also feel I'd have my limits. No. Other than very specific exceptions. No. Oh, I like that guy. He's right. Oh. Yes. Because if people didn't do stupid short-sighted things like that, then we'd have nothing to talk about. And this whole repetitive cycle of drama on YouTube would grind to a halt and I'd have to fill the rest of my days with anything else, like... were. Probably yes, if they were to credit me. If it was a much larger streamer than me, and the way that they showed Look it, who it is. possibly result in a bunch of their fans coming to Good my friend channel Hall. and becoming fans of yeah. my Maybe I wouldn't have a problem with it, but... Just on sort of like a principle level, I guess I'd feel very offended that they just show my video and not provide any extra commentary or any extra substance to it. So yeah, I asked a load of YouTubers if they would be okay with it and most of them said no. I chose these YouTubers literally at random from people I already had DMs with. We've got a good selection of different styles, different topics, different channel sizes, and yeah, a lot of no's in there. And the majority of yeses had caveats and conditions. If they give me a shout out and try to send people my way, then sure. Which again, just goes to show the importance of mutual respect when doing this kind of Thing. The thing that interests me though is the discrepancy between what Hassan was saying and what we're seeing here. So what's the difference? I don't believe for a second that Hassan was lying, so what gives? They want you to watch their videos. And I have many examples of this, of like content creators who I am friends with, like That's Andrew from Channel 5, who reach out to me to inform me that their new video is out so that we can react to it. He's like, I can't, I can't, I can't wait to see you and Chess reaction to this new video that we put out. I'm pretty sure I know exactly why that discrepancy is there. Hassan appears to be conflating the kind of reaction content I'm not okay with, with the kind of reaction content I absolutely support. Like a lot of the commenters we brought up earlier, Hassan doesn't seem to have drawn a line between reaction content that adds something and reaction content that really doesn't. Hassan has provided reactions that meet all of the standards I've outlined in this video. They're the kind of reaction that I actively encourage people to make and that I'm sure most creators would be absolutely thrilled to receive from a big Twitch streamer. It appears though that as far as Hassan is concerned, both these types of reaction are just reaction content to him, and he's painting it all with the same brush. This conflation is first demonstrated when, in response to me saying, please give credit and contribute something, he says, oh, this person doesn't want me reacting to their content. If you don't want me watching your stuff, I will gladly never watch it. I'm really sorry, I apologize. I will never watch uh, their stuff ever again, for the record. React harder is, that might be a- Billy really laughing because you know that the subtext of that is him being like, He's I was benefiting far. you. I was benefiting you and now I'm going to take it away from you. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Complain. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what he's saying, yeah. You well, your criticism, but like, they're correct if, they say, if they're like, mm -hmm. I don't want you to react to my videos. Which is kind of a weird response to a comment in which I actively tell him I'm fine with him reacting to my content. Hassan, if you see this, I'm happy for you to react to my videos. But it would fully explain why he made these comments if he's conflating those two types of reaction. And of course, it does make sense for him to think that way. If he has dismissed the criticism as just react harder, why would he draw a line between reaction content that does and doesn't adhere to a criticism that he doesn't view as valid? So when he says, most YouTubers don't mind that, actually love that shit when Twitch streamers react to their videos. He's talking about just Twitch reactions in general, which yeah, most YouTubers do appreciate. I appreciate that. I really like it when that kind of thing happens to me. But what Hassan seems to not understand is that most YouTubers do have a line where they're no longer okay with the reaction content. This line is gonna be in a different place for different creators. Most YouTubers like to receive reactions, but far, far fewer are comfortable with being used as filler as the streamer has some downtime. This is a distinction that it's vital to understand and respect if you're going to be doing regular reaction content on stream. Speaking of the free clout argument, Hassan also expands on it in a way we've not seen before. That's the reason why sponsors pay money to Twitch streamers to like play their video games, for example. Oh, no. There's a reason for that. It's because they want as many eyeballs as possible on it and then people will go and fucking, uh, you know, find it on their own. Hassan seems to love bringing they up video games. They don't find it on their own. They You literally have to spam link and shit in chat. They don't just yes, find it on yeah. their own. That was a really bad mischaracterization. <laughs> <laughs> 
he wants to bolster a position like this one. Basically, the whole video game industry not only tolerates, but actively supports YouTubers and streamers playing their games. Hassan likes to use this fact to demonstrate that there's actually a mutually beneficial relationship between a copyright holder and a streamer streaming their copyrighted content. Now, this actually is a great way to demonstrate the level of publicity that a streamer can provide, but it does ignore the reasons that video games are one of the only forms of media this applies to. Basically, I've recently played through both classic Star Wars Battlefront games. If I decided to stream both those games in their entirety to my audience, even without commentary, none of my audience would have actually played those games just by watching my stream. Anyone who went watching the stream had thought- It was funny though, as if he did, it likely would have been taken down by copyright, or at least monetized by the owners for the, the soundtracks, it's all from the movies. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, like I said, if it's just from the games, it's fine. But if it's from the movies into the games, then you, you're fucked. The Lord of the Rings games on, like, GameCube have footage from the films. So if you stream them, you're going to have to put a cover up. Otherwise, you're fucked. Same thing if you play GTA. You can't listen to the radio because sometimes they have yeah. like real. Yeah. But, oh, that game looks really fun and developed an interest in actually playing it, would then have to go and buy the game to do that. I've also recently watched the entirety of Smiling Friends, which is a show not a game. If I'd streamed the entirety of that to my audience, then anyone who'd watched the stream thought, hey, this show looks really funny, and then developed an interest in watching it, would have already seen it. Because I just showed it to them. Now, that's not to say they won't watch a potential season two if and when that comes out, or maybe go in pursuit of some episodes that they didn't manage to catch on my stream. Maybe they'll even go and buy some Smiling Friends merch, because from this interaction, Smiling Friends has gained a fan and all the benefits that come with that. But the companies that own TV shows and films tend to be a lot less positive about this kind of thing than the companies that own video games do. I could just as easily argue that the stranglehold these companies keep on preventing people from uploading their copyrighted content is proof that this kind of interaction actually hurts people, but the fact of the matter is that none of these mediums are directly equivalent to one another. Video games are a medium that get all of the benefits of this kind of interaction with basically none of the drawbacks. There's a reason it's different from medium to medium. Those were definitely the main arguments he relied upon during his stream, but he also said some other stuff that I found interesting, so let's take a brief look at that as well. One short part of the stream that interests me in particular is the part where he talks about why he thinks he doesn't need permission to do this kind of thing. So it's not okay to play someone's video if they don't want you to. Doesn't that mean you need to ask permission every time you watch it's someone else's content, which seems pretty lame? No, I don't do that. That's fucking ridiculous. I mean, I did say it was short. Another clip I find interesting is one where he's talking about the fact that he left the room for a while. I throw up the YouTube video on my phone, and I'm watching it. I'm simulcasting it on my phone as it is uh, playing on the stream. And if there's a moment that I want to, like, that I want to chime in with something, I will literally run back and fucking run back and, and uh, uh, put the and take there. It's the same as like me sitting there and not saying anything. I agree. It's exactly like he was sitting there and not saying anything. I'm starting to think he doesn't understand the issue that people take with this kind of thing. I guess though that logically this means he does understand that when he's just sitting there not saying anything, which is something he spends a lot of time doing, he may as well just not be in the room. And finally, I know you're curious about it. Let's have a look at that clip. Oh, they just show their God, channel name, funny. dumbass. This happens when someone in chat tells his son that he needs to just show the channel name. Show their fucking channel name, dude. It's not a big deal. No shit, dumbass. What kind of a fucking baboon are you? Hassan gets mad at this because of <laughs> how much he agrees with it. Like, you think I disagree? He's mad at how much he agrees with it. Uh... I disagree with that? Why do you... Oh, God, I fucking despise these dipshits, dude. Well, no, he's getting big mad because he thinks this is really obvious. I swear to fucking God. Like... Is such a fucking dingus, dude. They just show their channel name, dumbass. How is that so fucking hard? Like, what is this attitude that you have, you stupid? Yeah, I know. I agree. Hey, man. What? What kind of like? <laughs> he has some of the best clips online. Like, reacted to comments is fucking hilarious. Son is um, the master of the one guy. Yeah. Oh god, we had like a compilation on one of the EFAP episodes. Some of them were just you reacting to them because I couldn't find like the originals. This uh is something else. He um he's really bad at it, but it's really funny. Yeah. Like you make it seem like I purposely was like fucking hiding it or something. It was literally on my screen for like a fucking hour, you idiot. So in my opinion, like a fucking hour, you idiot is a strange way to phrase 18 seconds. Yeah, that's how long my channel name was on screen during Hassan's original stream. The rest of the time, um, 
no, I'm not sure how he could possibly think it was there. Like, how can you be that unfamiliar with your own setup? Him thinking this doesn't make any sense at all. Unless, maybe when he says their channel name was on my screen for like an hour, he's referring to the second stream that he did. I mean, there it is, and there it is again. Not for an hour, but for long enough where saying it was up there for an hour is like a reasonable level of hyperbole. If that is what he means though, then he's referring to something that he only did because I called him out. Meaning this would be another instance of, well, if they complain, I'll do what I should have done in the first place, but otherwise I'll just play their videos without showing their channel name. And since callouts seem to be what it takes to get streamers to do what they should have been doing the whole time, uh -oh. this is me doing a call out. Man, I, I can't wait to see how this video goes down. It's sure gonna be interesting, but uh, that's- It was a mess, by the way. This is the video that Denims and Irrelevant responded to and they were fucking morons with it. It uh -huh. was actually pretty great. Um, it was funny because when I met Chud Logic, I was like, lucky you didn't fucking make an idiot of yourself responded to this either, because holy fuck, the arguments they were pulling out. You wouldn't believe it. You know what? If you want to know what they are though, the EFAP episodes are all there. Gentle viewers. That's all from me today. If you've enjoyed this video, good. And that is the video. And that's JXC's channel, by the way, if you thought that was entertaining and you'd like to see more. Breach record stuff. Mostly movie reviews or TV show reviews and stuff. Okay. So, Give me one second. Feeling? I want to listen to the Nazi comment. Hold on. <laughs> Hold on. Watch their videos ever again and I move on. This is what I said one f***ing year ago. Since then he made a video or- What's your take on the Abe-Wendy breakup? Wait, did that happen? Wait, Link, what? They made a video. Afterwards, is it on they LSF? Uh, had like a bunch of Nazis in the kill stream get together and do an eight hour reaction to my entire stream. I think it was an eight or 10 hour podcast that they did on that, okay? And I apologized back then. And they held on to the grudge. And then they made another video now. Another video a year later. Sargon. Apparently, all the OTV people unfollowed Wendy. Oh, shit. Uh oh. Avocado joined multiple eight hour streams. If you expect me to think that that person is charitable at this point, I don't know what to tell you because it's not. You're a f***ing psycho if you think that that is a charitable person. No, that is a deranged person. It's a five minute video, which I apologize for. It's incredibly petty. It's incredibly fucking petty to watch their videos ever again and I move on. This is what I said one fucking year ago. Since then he made a video or they made a video. Afterwards, they uh, had like a bunch of Nazis in the kill stream get together and do an eight hour reaction to my entire stream. Oh, a bunch of Nazis get together and do an eight-hour reaction on my live stream. Gotcha. Yep. Damn. But hey, he literally heard about us five seconds earlier than that, so. All right, well. Hey, it's been fun, buddy. Stay safe. It right. has been fun. Good luck with whatever it is you get up to. Uh -huh. I'll uh, I'll be around, I suppose, if, uh, if you oh, need Oh, yeah, you got... Help, I think you, know? you should have perms of this channel, so if I'm ever in here, if you ever want to hop in and scream at me for something... Um, sure. I'll usually message you beforehand, because, uh, you know, it can be a mess. It can be turmoil. It's just, this is something that I knew about us all, so. Yeah. All right. Well, I love you. Be careful, buddy. See you, dude. Bye-bye. Bye. How do I get out of this thing? <laughs> Dumbass. See you next time, bucko.